This is Dr. Vermilio. In this presentation, we'll discuss using the hearing and noise tests in various case studies. Uh, this will be the representation that we'll look at for most of the case studies. This is a graph that shows the hearing and noise test threshold against the norms. And we have the test uh, shown here for the quiet, or rather we have the data shown for the quiet test, the noise left test, the noise front test, and the noise right test. Notice for the noise quiet test, the, the data are expressed in dBA. For the noise right, or excuse me, for the noise test, the data are expressed in dB signal to noise ratio. Uh, the shaded region, the green and yellow shaded region, represents the norms. The top of the shaded region represents the 95th percentile. The bottom of the shaded region represents the 5th percentile. Uh, anything above or better than the 95th percentile, and remember, the more negative the score, the better. So anything above the 95th percentile is called above normal limits. Anything below the 5th percentile is called below a performance below normal limits. Uh, anything right at the 50th percentile is called the mean, or excuse me, are called average performance. Anything above the 50th percentile is a performance above average. Any performance below the 50th percentile is perf represents performance below average. So in this, the, the latter two are both within normal limits but they're also above average or below average performances. Okay, so you get the picture, so we, we get the data and we compare it to the norms. And we answer the question, was the patient's performance within normal limits? If it was in normal limits, was it below average or was it above average or was it average? Or was the patient's performance better than normal limits, above normal limits, or was it below normal limits? Okay, we'll talk about a couple of cases here of unaided uh, patients, no hearing aids, no devices. The first two have a high frequency sensory neural hearing loss, and the third one is a case for obscure auditory dysfunction. Uh, obscure auditory dysfunction is the presentation of normal pure tone thresholds, but with the complaint that the patient is struggling to recognize speech in background noise. Okay, so two cases with sensory neural hearing loss. Uh, case one and two demonstrate the use of HINT to determine whether functional impairment of speech communication ability and noise accompanies high frequency sensory neural hearing impairment. The patient is a 45-year-old male. Here is his audiogram. The red line with the circles represents the right ear. The blue line with the X's represents the left ear x-axis is frequency in hertz, the y-axis uh, represents threshold in dBHL, and we can see from this patient's audiogram that he has a high frequency sensory neural hearing loss. And if you pictured that speech banana superimposed over this uh, audiogram, you would realize that uh, the patient uh, is able to detect most of the vowel sounds, because that's lower frequency sounds, but most likely the patient is missing some amount of the high frequency information in speech, so missing some of the S, F, and SH sounds. So the question is, for this patient with a uh, high frequency sensory neural hearing loss, will their hearing and noise test results be within normal limits, or will it be above normal limits or below normal, normal limits? What do you think? High frequency sensory neural hearing loss I think this person is going to struggle to hear speech and noise. Okay, well, let's take a look. Here are his hint thresholds. Now, notice that the hint threshold in quiet is within normal limits, but it's below average. And the hint thresholds for the noise front, noise left, and noise right conditions are all within normal limits. However, uh, they are all below average. Now, the, the test was normed on individuals who have normal audiograms. Our patient in this case has a severe, it looks like a severe, moderate to severe high frequency hearing loss, sensory neural hearing loss, and his scores are within normal limits. So he scored just the same 
as uh, as folks who scored below average uh, with normal audiograms. Very interesting. Okay. Uh, the second case, a 30-year-old male. The patient reported no difficulty hearing. I, I will tell you he was applying for a job in law enforcement in California. Here is his audiogram. Uh, not too different from the previous audiogram. High frequency loss. You see uh, what looks like a notch here, most likely due to exposure to high levels of sound. Could have been a former member of the military. Uh, the threshold at 2,000 hertz is a little bit lower, but still within normal limits. So again, a high frequency hearing loss. Now, will this patient's hint score be within normal limits or below normal limits for its speech recognition and noise ability using the hint? Let's take a look. And here are his hint scores. Notice that the quiet score is actually just on the border of uh, what's normal for the hearing and quiet test. And hearing and noise all is below normal limits. Uh, for the noise riot, it's just barely below normal limits. But again, his scores are below normal limits, whereas the previous uh, patients, his, his scores were all within, uh, within normal limits. So two patients with similar hearing loss and audiometric configurations, however, they differ substantially in what we can call functional hearing ability or the ability to recognize speech and noise. Case one was within normal limits. Case two showed a 30 to 40 poor intelligibility than the average normal person in all noise environments at super threshold levels. And we get that 30 to 40 percent because remember, for every 1 dB change in threshold, that represents a, uh, a 10 percent change in intelligibility. Case two uh, may show improved functional hearing, possibly with binaural amplification and perhaps with a directional microphone. Here's a case of a person with obscure auditory dysfunction. Again, obscure uh, auditory dysfunction is one of the names used for patients with normal pure tone thresholds and the self-report that they are struggling to hear or to recognize speech in noise to some degree. Uh, case three demonstrates the use of hint to document complaints of difficulty hearing in noise despite normal pure tone thresholds. Uh, and this is another name for obscure auditory dysfunction. It's also called King Kapetsky syndrome. Uh, some people think it's, this is also another name for a central auditory processing disorder or an auditory processing disorder. The patient is a 44 year old male uh, with a six year history of difficulty hearing speech in background noise. The patient reported that his hearing loss hurt his, his social life. Here is his audiogram. Everything is within normal limits for the right ear and the left ear. His speech perception threshold for the right ear, AD stands for right ear, was 15 dBHL, which is consistent with the pure tone average for, uh, for the right ear. And then his SRT, speech perception threshold, again using spondees, right, for the, excuse me, actually how can we have two right ears? Okay, one of these is the left ear. Let's call this uh, mislabeled. This is actually a left ear. Okay, but they're both 15 dB HL, consistent with the audiogram. And then uh, here is the speech or word recognition score, also called the speech discrimination score word recognition score at 45 dBHL, so the words are presented at 45 dBHL. Uh, say the word car, say the word house, say the word boat, etc. For the right ear, the patient understood 100% of the words, and for the left ear, the patient understood, uh, sorry about the, the fonts there, 96% of the words. So, pure tone thresholds are within normal limits. The SRT agrees with the pure tone average for both ears. The word recognition scores are excellent. What was the patient's complaint? Right, the patient is, is claiming that he's struggling to hear speech recognition and speech and noise. Okay, do these tests determine the ability to recognize speech and noise? No, they don't. Okay, so let's test him with the hint and see what happens. And here are his hint thresholds. Notice that the quiet score while it's below average, it's still within normal limits. But look at the scores 
for the for the uh, speech and noise test. Noise front, noise right, and noise left all within, or excuse me, all below normal limits. So the hearing and noise test actually validates, <coughs> excuse me, the patient's report that he is struggling to hear speech in noise. So uh, the patient may benefit from counseling regarding improvement of the signal to noise ratio in his uh, communication environments. The patient may also benefit from an ALD or assistive listening device that improves the signal to noise ratio such as an FM system. Or the patient may benefit from the use of a hearing aid uh, where there's probably not a lot of amplification but uh, the use of a directional microphone. This auditory function is no longer obscure although its cause remains uh, unknown. Okay, this is a really interesting case. Oh, excuse me, let me back up a little bit. So this, this is what you see in the study by Middleweird uh, in 1990 where they looked at groups of uh, patients or subjects who reported uh, difficulty hearing speech and noise, but they also uh, had normal audiograms. So this is very similar to those patients that Middleweird saw and some of the patients that uh, Dr. King in 1954 reported on where the patient had a normal audiogram and they reported difficulty recognizing speech and noise. Okay, uh, pediatric fever-related hearing loss. This is really a fascinating case study. Uh, this demonstrates the use of the HINT C. So this is the children's version of the HINT uh, study. Uh, and let's see the okay. Uh, case, let me back up. Case four demonstrates the use of HINT C to study complaints a functioning, functional disorder in a child with a history of transient or temporary sensory neural deafness. Now we've heard about transient conductive losses that come and go with the fluid in the middle ear, but this is a transient uh, sensory neural loss. This is very interesting. Six-year-old female. Uh, she has a fever-related hearing loss due to auditory neuropathy as reported by Yvonne Sinninger and Arnold Starr. Uh, she reported difficulty recognizing speech and noise and when she's talking on the telephone when her temperature is normal. Here is her audiogram when her temperature is at 101 degrees Fahrenheit. Look, look at this loss. Really interesting. And an interesting configuration, this, this uh, rising audiogram like that that's for the left ear. So this is her hearing loss when she has 101 degree temperature. Her SRT for the right ear is 105 uh, dBHL. SRT for the left ear, 100 dBHL. Uh, very, very interesting. And then for both ears, the transient evoked otoacoustic emissions are present. So that means that the outer hair cells uh, seem to be functioning during this time. And the, um, for both years, the ABRs were absent. So the, the, the and this is the classic uh, sign of an auditory neuropathy, right? Very interesting. Look at this. Her temperature is at 98.6. Really, really interesting. Uh, Look at the SRTs now. They jump up to 0 dB HL for both ears when the speech is presented at 30 dB HL. Uh, and the, the, uh, excuse me, when the speech is presented at uh, 30 dB HL for the word recognition score, that's the super threshold test. This is the threshold test, right? Super threshold test, 92% for the right ear, 96% for the left ear. Again, abnormal ABRs when the temperature is normal. Really fascinating. So this is with the temperature, this is without the temperature. Very interesting. And this is when her temperature is normal. These are her hearing and noise thresholds. Uh, the score, her threshold in quiet is within normal limits. Look at for the noise left. Oh my gosh. That's very, very poor. Way below normal limits. Noise front, below normal limits. And the noise right threshold was so low we actually can't plot it on this graph. The graph ends at about uh, plus 4. This is a plus 6.2 dB signal-to-noise ratio. 
Isn't that interesting? So, and again, uh, the patient has a normal audiogram at this time. So can a normal audiogram detect this type of, of hearing and noise loss by itself? No. What about the word recognition scores? The speech reception score, uh, re reception threshold rather, in quiet or the word recognition score, super threshold test in quiet or even the hint uh, sentences in quiet. None of those reflect this type of loss. It's when we look at the speech and noise score that we see this uh, discrepancy. Very, very interesting. Okay, so uh, this patient had substantial functional impairment seen with the hint C with normal temperature and pure tone thresholds. And the hint C results were consistent with the patient's complaints. All right, here are a few uh, aided cases. This, we're going to have a patient with a hearing aid and a patient with uh, something called a cross hearing aid, a contralateral routing of signal hearing aid. The uh, patient is 62, excuse me, 62 years old. Uh, she was unhappy with her current hearing aids, and the patient was interested in new hearing aids that would improve her ability to hear in noise. Here is her audiogram. Now, the bone conduction thresholds are not plotted, but we know that the patient had roughly, a, a, on average, a 25 dB air bone gap. So if we plotted the bone thresholds, they would be up here some, somewhere. So that would represent uh, most likely a mixed hearing loss. Okay, uh, Speech discrimination scores are right around 96%, but we don't show the level of the speech, but we know that the level of the speech must have been above threshold in order for us to conduct the test. Here are her scores with her old hearing aids. What do you think about this? So do you think this lady would have difficulty recognizing speech and noise with her, with her old hearing aids? I think so. This is going to be a huge problem. All performances for the noise front, noise right, and noise left uh, conditions are all below normal limits. Now here are the scores with her new hearing aids. Uh, do you think we'll, we'll see an improvement? Do you, think, do you think we'll get improvement back into normal limits? Let's check. Okay, here are both scores. Old hearing aid, new hearing aid. Did we get the lady's performance back into the range of normal with the new hearing aid? No. Did, did the new hearing aids help uh, this patient hear better in noise? Yes. Yes, they did. So, we could tell the patient, and this is very, very useful for counseling, we could say, ma'am, you know, while the hearing aids were not able to restore normal speech recognition and noise ability, they, were, they are able to help you. Uh, you'll need to do uh, other things to improve uh, your listening uh, in, in a noisy environments, such as making sure you, you, you watch for facial cues, you decrease the level of the noise whenever possible, or she, you know, she might be a candidate for an FM system, or if this a new hearing aid does not have a directional mic, maybe a nice directional mic would help. Uh, there are special directional mics called beam forming arrays that can greatly improve the signal to noise ratio. She might be a candidate for those devices. So the new hearing aids improve thresholds in noise in all conditions. The threshold improvements correspond up to 30% better intelligibility. The test results may be useful in counseling the patient regarding realistic expectations, which is, is infinitely important. Let's look at a person who is, has a cross hearing aid. The subject is a 35-year-old male with a congenital hearing loss. He was an applicant for a law, law enforcement job, seeking to improve his hearing enough to be considered for the job. Okay, look at this audiogram. Okay, you see this audiogram? Uh, we have the left ear is all within normal limits. The, the right ear has a very significant, uh, we would call this a severe to profound uh, high frequency hearing loss. Think of that speech banana. Low frequency vowels, high frequency voiceless fricatives. What sounds would the patient miss in this right ear? 
Well, it would actually be most of those speech sounds. Uh, he would get some vowel information, but not all of the vowel information. He certainly would not hear all the formants uh, for, the, for the vowels in the right ear. Speech discrimination score, also known as a word recognition score, 100% for the left ear and 0% when the words were presented at 55 dBHL. He didn't understand any of the words uh, when the words were presented at, at a fixed level of 55 dBHL. So one way to treat this type of loss is to put a microphone, uh, it looks like a hearing aid with a microphone on the right ear and then we would route the signal to the left ear. That's, that's one way to get to, to help this person. Remember that thing called the head shadow effect, right? The head shadow effect. So when a person is whispering on the right side or speaking quietly to the, uh, to the patient's right uh, side, the head attenuates the high frequency sounds and then speech will sound muffled delivered to the left ear. Here are his hint conditions, or hint scores rather, uh, without any device. Okay, noise left, way below normal limits. Remember, noise, the good ear is the left ear. So imagine a good left ear receiving the noise that's delivered to the left ear, right? So the one good ear is getting all this noise. Look at the score, very horrible. Okay, now what about when we put the noise on the right side of the patient? Well, there's this thing called a head shadow effect. And in this, uh, for this condition, the head shadow effect is a, is a good thing because the head is actually blocking some of the noise going to the left ear, which is the good ear, right? And uh, the speech is coming from in front of the patient. So the patient actually has a better signal-to-noise ratio for the left side, and the score is reflected right here, which is more negative than when the noise is on the left side. The noise front score is uh, just below normal limits. And look at this. The quiet score, the noise, uh, or rather the quiet score, is below average, but it's still within normal limits. And, the, and again, quiet is determined when the speech is delivered from in front of the patient. Okay, now we're going to put this thing called a cross hearing aid on the patient. The, the, uh, a microphone is going to be placed on the right ear, the, the bad ear, and deliver the sound to the left ear. So will the patient have better hint performance with the cross hearing aid? What do you think? Okay, let's look. And there are the scores. What a story, huh? Isn't that interesting? Now, look at this. Uh, the patient was within normal limits when the noise was off to the right. Now the patient's is, score is way below normal limits when the noise is off to the right. And just the opposite happened. Without the, the, the device, the score is way below normal limits. And now we're closer to, but not quite to, uh, normal limits with the, with the device. Uh, speech recognition, when the speech and the noise are from the front, actually got a little worse with the device. And speech in quiet actually is now below normal limits. What is going on here? Okay, first question, did we help the patient? Well, a actually, no, we didn't. And in some cases, for the noise front and the noise left, we made it things worse. So I think the net effect is we, we actually made things worse. We transferred the problem from one ear to the other uh, based on the, on the noise. Uh, it's, it's, it's not what we want, right? This guy's trying to get a job in law enforcement, and we put a cross hearing aid on this patient, and it's, it's, just, not, it's just not working out the way we, we wanted it to. Okay, so remember the microphone is on the right ear. The, no, the, uh, the good ear is the left ear. So when the noise goes towards the bad ear, there's a head shadow effect that blocks some of the, the noise getting to the left ear. We get a better signal to noise ratio on the left ear and um, we see this nice score within normal limits. But with the cross hearing aid we have a microphone on the right side that's delivering the noise that's coming towards the right ear. We're delivering now all that noise to the left ear. That's why the score uh, went down like this. Let's look at this. Noise left 
The noise is going towards the bad ear, or excuse me, going towards the good ear. The left ear is the good ear. And we see this very, very poor performance. And now the microphone is on the right side. The noise is going towards the left ear. The head is blocking some of the noise going towards that right ear. We're taking that better signal-to-noise ratio and routing it over to the left ear, the good ear. That's why you see an improvement in the score. Okay, uh, we don't see an improvement for the noise front condition, and things are actually worse in the quiet condition. Uh, this may be due to a couple of reasons. One could be the noise floor of the hearing aid. Uh, hearing aids have amplifiers and speakers, and any amplifier is going to have a noise floor, and we could have actually amplified also the noise floor, like the air conditioning system, in the test environment. So this was not a good situation. Things uh, got worse. Also, for the cross hearing aid, the patient had to wear an ear mold in his, um, actually in both ears, but in particular uh, the left ear, and that could have decreased uh, the patient's ability to recognize speech in quiet. So very interesting. When I first arrived at, at the lab at the House Ear Clinic, or rather the House Ear Institute, uh, in Dr. Sig Soli's lab, working with Michael Nielsen, who was my direct supervisor. I couldn't understand why they wanted to measure speech recognition when the noise was off to the right, the left, and the front. It just didn't make any sense to me until <laughs> I tested uh, this gentleman, and then I saw, oh my gosh, there's things, there's information that we can get when we test the noise, uh, test speech recognition and noise with, this, uh, with the speech and the noise spatially separated that you just cannot get with uh, testing under headphones one ear at a time or testing the patient in sound field where the speech and the noise are coming from the same, director, same direction. The spatial separation of the speech and the noise really does give us uh, some startling information in this situation. Okay, so the cross aid improved functional hearing on the poorer side while degrading it by almost the same amount on the better side. The ear mold attenuation of sound directly reaching the good ear may have caused the degradation in quiet. Uh, hit noise side conditions revealed difficulties not associated with noise front. Okay, and those are our case studies, uh, and that gives you an idea of how to use the hit data, how to interpret the hit data, and how we can use this especially for counseling and uh, making decisions about accommodations for a hearing loss, uh, especially hearing difficulty in noise.